Coming up on this episode of the Beer Muta Triangle. Breweries are expanding. Uh, breweries are growing. Breweries are opening. You probably don't even know that you want this sandwich until you try this. <laughs> this is Turkey Pete Sill. He was one of the more famous inmates. There's always something going on in Whitefish. In October, this is one of the big things that people have to do. If you had fun today, though, you really ought to come back at night. Our ghosts love having guests. Ghosts? Oops. Bands of outlaws and vigilantes roamed early Montana territory, leaving a path of destruction and death. In an attempt to tame the Wild West, a prison was established in Deer Lodge in 1871. Constructed primarily with convict labor, Old Montana Prison was an active prison until 1979 when it was moved to a new site four miles west of town. Now in 2017, these two are the only who remain behind the iron bars. Hello Montana travel and beer enthusiasts and welcome to the Oktoberfest edition of the Beer Beauty Triangle. In this episode, we'll be traveling from here at the Old Montana Prison to the Smelter City Brewery in Anaconda. Then we'll head to Quarry Brewing in historic Butte, Montana before we head to our final destination which will be the Great Northwest Oktoberfest in Whitefish, Montana. But first, let's get out of here. Out. Turkey Pete Sill. He was one of the more famous inmates. He was a distraction for the other inmates, and he earned his name by running the turkey farm outside of the prison, except one day he sold all the turkeys for 25 cents a head to a farmer passing by. He was here until he was 87 years old, but during that time he kind of lost touch with reality and began to think that he owned the prison. So he actually had checks made up in our print shop and he would every payday go around and pay all the guards and the warden and the assistant warden. He would read the warden's newspaper, Warden Christ, every morning got really frustrated with him and came in and chewed him out and told him to not sleep up there anymore and get the heck out of here. He folded his paper very neatly, banged on the desk as he stood up and Turkey goes, I hired you and I damn well can fire you. Luke, how are you? Doing great, how you doing? Good, hey, I am excited to be here. First time, not to Anaconda, but to Smelter City Brewery. But you can't hold that against me because you guys have only been open how many months now? Uh, just a few months now. A few months, Yep, we yeah. opened up in late June. Welcome uh, to Montana. And thank you, welcome here. Yeah, cheers. cheers. Good. Uh, you're drinking a lager. I am drinking the special seasonal, just in time for Oktoberfest season. Yeah. But this is a Dunkelweizen and it's pumpkin. Yep. Spices. I love that you've already had a good bit of it, but you did a sugar rim with cinnamon. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. That's because I'm not super into the crazy amount of spices uh, mm -hmm. personally. So that way, if somebody wants more pumpkin spice, they can get a little bit more than we actually put into the beer itself. There is some spices, some pumpkin spice, some nutmeg, cinnamon, things like that. But um, that kind of just enhances the experience and makes it a little more special. Luke, I'm looking over your beer menu and I'm seeing lagers and ales. And uh, we want to talk about the system that you have okay. that you're making in there. What do you Yeah, um, so not a lot of craft breweries do lagers, uh, but the brewery that I worked at in Pennsylvania and started off at, which is Sprague Farm and Brew Works, um, he always touted the simplicity and also the sophistication of lagers, so I thought we would kind of, you know, continue that tradition. Um, and he's a German trained guy, so I just wanted to kind of keep that going as well. Uh, but we also have ales. Uh, ales go a little bit faster through the system. Uh, they're done a little bit warmer as opposed to lagers, which are done at a much colder temperature and take a lot more time. It has been a great day so far, and just up the road is a place known for its mineral soaking pools, Fairmont Hot Springs. 
I think that sounds like an awesome idea. I have a feeling that after tonight's ghost tour, I'm gonna need to relax. Coming up. All right, Amy, let's settle the big debate. Is it a pork chop, John's? Yes, this is the original pork chop sandwich. And. They could mark you, scratch you, push you, stuff like that. On the Bermuda Triangle Oktoberfest edition. Welcome back to the Bermuda Triangle Oktoberfest edition. The Bermuda Triangle is sponsored by Rangage Brothers RV Center, First Montana Bank, and Zip Beverage. So we are here in Deer Lodge doing a ghost tour of the old Montana State Prison, and um, we are expecting some great things. Yes, and so far, it's so good. I mean, this is... Uh... This is kind of an interesting way to see the prison at night with flashlights and a few lights are brought and an open mind. There seems to be a lot of paranormal activity. I'm using this app on my phone that's recording some of the activity. So we're in this room adjacent to the deputy warden's office, the warden's office, where uh, he was shot and killed at one time. And across this app came the word bang that was picking up. So right now it's been replaced by the word palace. Okay, so where you guys are standing right now is the original graveyard for the prison. They see like black shadows running back and forth in this area. And I had seen a black shadow up here in the tower. And I'm like, there's not supposed to be anybody up in that tower. And so you can see the body of the man. And so Heather came out right away. She started snapping photos and the orbs around this tower, there was tons of them. Came in. We were having a lot of people getting scratched and in this area and the medium said if we would put her picture back up that would stop and it did for quite a while. We're back to getting the scratches again. We're not exactly sure why um, but we do know that it's happening. A lot of funny things go on in this building. We had an excellent night's rest and a dip in the mineral pools here at Fairmont Hot Springs Resort. The Fairmont Hot Springs Resort is a full service resort in southwest Montana centered around a hot springs with four large hot springs fed pools, 18 hole golf course, a conference center of 20,000 square feet, and a 153 room hotel. We're located in a rural area and not in a business district so you get a taste of what Montana is all about. It's quiet and it's a relaxing experience. Good morning, beer enthusiasts. It's day two of the October Fest edition of the Beer Muta Triangle. We've got two things on our list today. We're gonna hit up Cory Brewing and check out their wonderful lineup of beers. As well as, let's handle the big pork chop debate. I'm ready. Let's go. Welcome back to the Bermuda Triangle Oktoberfest edition. Tag us on Facebook for your chance to be part of the show. Back in 2008, uh, when we had just been a year old, people were like, well, what about IPAs? We need an IPA. Well, right about that same time was a worldwide hop shortage. Uh, literally, there was a two million pound warehouse fire and hops could not be gotten. If you didn't have them under contract, you weren't getting any hops at all. Uh, we lucked out for commercial brewing that um, Sam Adams had actually ponied up and released some of their contracts. And so we were able in a lottery to get 88 pounds of hops. That kept us going for the commercial side of things. For local side of things, somebody walked in one day and said, well, isn't this a hop? Yeah, where the hell did you find it? In an alleyway. I'm like, in an alleyway, what? So local hops, for us, it's just a local beer. It's a great way to get together as a community. Um, everybody who supplied hops gets a growler fill. Everybody came in and picked hops gets a growler fill. Um, it's much more about community for us. That's what we're here for. I mean, I don't want to be the next Anheuser-Busch. I don't like who I am. I love breweries because it's kind of the Montana feel. You know, Montana's known as this, this state where everyone's riding horses, going hunting, and that's what we do largely. 
we also kind of do things for ourselves like make our own beer. You know, the bigger cities, people are drinking these fancy drinks, people are, are drinking, you know, Budweiser, Coors, no, no offense to them, but we have craft beers, we have microbrews, we have these delicious beers like strawberry wheat that they have here at Highlander, you, you know, all these fantastic beers that are made here in our town. So it's, it's great to kind of give back to the town that's given so much to us. Definitely when you, when you go anywhere, you're going to be close enough to a brewery that you can sit down, grab a beer, talk about the hunt, talk about whatever you're in town for, and it, it feels like home. You know, this place, like most breweries, aren't a bar where there's people loud, annoying, drunk, doing this and that. And there's people sitting down enjoying beer, especially like Highlander where it's, it's a max of three beers. People aren't here to get crazy, they're here to enjoy the art of making beer. I did go to New York and I did get to go to um, one of the biggest breweries there and honestly it didn't have the same atmosphere that, that they do here. Um, it was a little more industrial and bigger and didn't have the like hometown community feel that I was telling you about that I really love. I find breweries to be a really good place to be social with your friends and you just have a couple of beers, it has an automatic curfew um, and it's just a nice laid back atmosphere so that's why I like it. And beer is awesome. We're about to sample a little bit of double IPA straight from the tank, not even on tap yet. Super, super excited. It smells delicious. It's a good IPA. Oh, man, if you ever get a chance to try something straight from the tank, you got to be friends with the brewer. Luckily, we are. Ask for it. It's, it's a unique beer experience. Very good. When we first opened, we could not give head frame Hefeweizen away. Nobody understood what a Bavarian Hef was, and we, it was one of our standard beers. We then had to drop it and come up with Galena Gold. Galena Gold is a nice, crisp, light ale. Um, it's a good transition beer from Bud and Bud Light into Micros, and so it, it worked really well for us. Um, now we're starting to see those people develop more taste buds, more flavor, and they want variety. So coming back to Head Frame Hefeweizen and now, now it's one of the most popular beers that we have on top, tap seasonally. I mean, people want it because it's more flavor. Man, it tastes like bananas and clove. How many bananas do you use? None. What do you mean? I taste bananas. It's, um, the beer scene in Butte is expanding because, I mean, we had three open up all at once. And it really, it really taught people in Butte, hey, this isn't something just a flash in the pan. This is going to be around. That's what's, ex what's being experienced across the country. Breweries are expanding, uh, breweries are growing, breweries are opening. It's wave after wave getting to more people to try craft. Yes, this is the original pork chop sandwich. Cheers. Are you ready? Oh, this looks go cool. good. Mmm. Mm-hmm. I was gonna go no onion and no mustard just because I'm not a big fan. Mm -hmm. There's a reason they put onion and mustard on there. Yeah. And that's really good. This is amazing. Uh, you probably don't even know that you want this sandwich as much as you do <laughs> until you try this. I mean, this is one of those things that you're not quite complete until mm -hmm. you have it. And I say. I don't know how I could do it without all of this, mm -hmm. the, the ham is complimenting the pork chop, mm -hmm. which is complimenting the eggs. And the mustard. The, the mustard's hitting it in there. I really like it. You're this feeling it back there, there and This was, uh, this sandwich was likened to its German heritage, uh, the schnitzel with this. And I can see it's fitting in well for our Oktoberfest edition. We keep them fresh in our back room here for our use in Butte. Mm -hmm. We serve them here and at our other store in in uh, downtown on Harrison Avenue. And then we freeze everything else and we send it out of here. We just left Pork Chop John's and we are heading into the third leg of the Bermuda Triangle second episode. We're heading north. We're heading up to Whitefish. We're gonna take part of, up in their Oktoberfest celebrations. Probably involves beer, food, fun and I know I've got three of those things down. Games? Games, lots of games. Games. Games are good. We'll find something so, to do. Watch out Whitefish, we're excited. And, we're coming uh, for you. 
we're on the way. Lodging for this leg of the Bermuda Triangle was provided by Fairmont Hot Springs Resorts. Bermuda Triangle is proudly sponsored by Stampede Packing Company, maker of Redneck brand cottage bacon, maple sweet hams, and distinctive sausages. Clothing provided by Montana Roots. Visit MyMontanaRoots.com. Transportation provided by Rangage Brothers RV Center. Welcome back to the Bermuda Triangle Oktoberfest edition. Prost! Every year, Whitefish has um, their Oktoberfest, our Oktoberfest. It's in September and then the first week of October normally. Um, it's just a bunch of fun. You come out and we have a lot of drinking games. All right, guys, on your mark. Get set. Hold them straight out. Straight out. There you go. Hold them straight out. There you go. All right. That's another tradition that commences the Oktoberfest activities. I, the Hops Queen, go out and I tap the keg. And normally it's been a wooden keg, but this year we had um, a metal keg. And I think that was why it was so explosive this year. Eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf. Uh, different competitions. Has the groove been set? I thought you would say that. Ladies and gentlemen, on your mark, get set. Saw the log, guys. Alrighty then. This is our first men's log sign team of Oktoberfest 2017 from George's Distributing, and they're going through this log pretty darn fast. We're already at 23 seconds. As I said, that, that's a pretty significant log, right ladies? Uh-oh, I hear it cracking. Yes, you agree with me. Thank you for actually listening to me. All right, they're close to the end of this thing. Let's give them about three more stretch to go. About one, two, three, maybe four or five. There you go. 49. It's just a lot of fun. Um, Oktoberfest activities to get the town out. Whitefish is so willing to come out and just have a good time, no matter what the theme is. We're always going to come out and do it. So there's always something going on in Whitefish. In October, this is one of the big things that people come out to. This one is excellent. I think the beer selection is really fun. I, I really like the Frog Hop, which is from uh, the Great Northern Brewery here in Whitefish. Um, and um, other than that, I think it's 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 pretty darn authentic as well as far as I know. Um, coming from the north, I like it a lot. What we're enjoying right now for Oktoberfest is the Great Northern Oktoberfest beer. I mean, what are some of your flagships and then what are some of the most anticipated seasonal beers that you produce? So my favorite right now is what I actually am drinking. I'm not drinking Oktoberfest. Okay. It's our Frog Hop Fresh Hopped Wet Hopped Pale Ale. Okay. This is our community beer. We added 650 pounds of fresh hops to our brew from the community. People came from all over town. They dropped their hops off at the brewery. We gave them money to spend in the draft house and we threw it into our pale ale. We brew it every year. It differs in varietals because it is what the season allows. And we produce this in kegs and 22 ounce bottles once a year. Now our flagships, we actually started as primary a lager brewing company and we continue that tradition. So we have our wheat fish wheat lager, we have our wild huckleberry wheat lager, and those both are award winning lagers that we can have in bottles year round. We also have our Going to the Sun IPA, which is a sessionable IPA, mm -hmm. and then we have our Good Medicine Strong Red Ale, 
which is a hard one to categorize, but it drinks crisp, clean, and just right off the tongue. Guys, I'm Kate Bernat. I'm the beer editor at Draft Magazine. I'm also a beer judge certification program certified beer judge. We are here in beautiful Whitefish, Montana at the Great Northwest Oktoberfest. You guys, there's a lot of good beer here, okay? I've, I've drank a lot of it. It's very tasty. And uh, I've got a few of the beers that are served here tonight with me. Um, we're gonna talk about a few of them. These are my favorites that I've had all night. One of them is from Great Northern Brewery. You guys know them. They're right over here down the street in Whitefish. And this is their Munich-style Helles Lager called Jorts, uh, which is kind of an awesome name. You guys love Jorts. I love Jorts. And um, this is like a refreshing, light Pilsner malt showcase. It's crisp. It's a really beautiful, drinkable lager that's great in the summer or for this time of weather when summer is kind of turning into fall. Um, you're really noticing the tasty, quality Pilsner malt they're using here. I'm going to take another drink of it. That's super tasty. Then we also get into our two Oktoberfest beers because Oktoberfest is not just an awesome celebration, it's also a style of beer. So Oktoberfests are Märzen lagers, which is a traditional German style of lager. I have one here from Great Northern and also from Hofbrau, which is from Germany. They've imported the beer here for this festival. It's really tasty, you guys. It's malty, it's bready, it's rich, but it finishes nice and dry so you can drink about, what is this, like three liters? You could drink like three liters of this stuff. It is really tasty, great malt profile, but super drinkable and clean. Your arm is gonna get tired before you wanna stop drinking. I mean, that's my left hand, like, it's not, not my drinking hand. Um, but there's some really great beers here. Go out, try some Oktoberfest. Like, try the authentic ones from Germany as well as the ones that local Montana craft brewers are making because they are super delicious. Thanks for watching this episode of the Bermuda Triangle. Check out our website, BermudaTriangleMT.com, to watch current episodes, learn about new ones, and special features not found in today's show. The Bermuda Triangle was created by Brand Edge Marketing and produced by Gravity Media Productions. The Beer Muta Triangle Series is sponsored by Rangich Brothers RV Center, First Montana Bank, and Zip Beverage. Remember, keep your adventures alive by enjoying responsibly.